Hi, Eric here on CyberZeb, and I'm going to do a couple range tests with my Blazer EV. You'll see it behind me, I'm charging it to 100%, and it's a cold day today and tomorrow, and I'm going to do a preconditioned range test at 100%, or efficiency test, I should say. So I'm just going to drive my usual loop that's about 42 miles each direction. It closely represents EPA range, so I should get a number similar to EPA. And when I did the test in moderate weather, I did get near EPA or slightly over EPA with the Blazer. So I'll show that number here on the screen later when I compare it to the cold weather testing. And with the cold weather testing, 10 Fahrenheit right now, um, it's going to be preconditioned with a warm battery because it's just finishing up charging. And uh, so this is how much the cold weather will affect efficiency, not a cold battery. When I get back, I'll charge it up to 100%, and then I'll move the car outside overnight where it will sit at cold weathers down to maybe minus 5 or minus 10 Fahrenheit. And then I'll do another range test immediately in the morning at 100%, and we'll see how it compares to the preconditioned one. So as you will expect that it'll probably do much better preconditioned, but let's verify that. I like to verify. I don't see a reason to drive the whole battery down because we know how big the battery is. All we need to know is the efficiency. So with the efficiency, we can calculate what the range is expected to be. So the first thing to check with any range test is your Tire pressures, we're at 38 PSI across the board, so that's perfectly adequate. We'll go with that. The temperature says 37, but I'm parked in the garage. It's about 10 outside. I can update that later as we go. And the next thing I want to do is reset my trip. Just as a note, I don't totally believe this 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour for the lifetime, but I'll do a different segment on that. I haven't that hasn't changed at all since winter started when my average has been around 2.2 so and I've driven a few thousand miles so I'd expect that to drop some but anyway it works fine for the one trip so we'll reset that and now I need to go unplug and we'll go ahead and start our drive so I'm unplugged and ready to go the last thing I want to do is check the temperature 75 i don't it's a little hot at 75 i'm going to set it at 72 and then it's just good to be consistent so i'll do the same thing tomorrow and uh then seat heaters are fine they won't use a significant amount of energy but it's at two so i'll make sure i use the same setting tomorrow so i'm just now finishing up the loop and I have about another 41 miles or so to drive once I finish the loop here. I'm sitting right at 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour according to the trip computer. Uh, for the efficiency, I'm going to use the from the wall efficiency for this as I always do for this test because uh, it's the most accurate way to do it just in case the trip computer tells me something different. Uh, the time of the trip, it says 1 hour 29 minutes, but that's actually since I remote started the vehicle when, and I let it run for about 40 minutes. So I'm roughly 40 minutes into the trip or a little longer. So uh, it will be a total of about an hour and a half, 80 minutes or an hour and a half, and a total of 82 miles or so. And with that, we'll see where I am when I finish the next loop, which will be the end of the test. So it's at 12 Fahrenheit right now, and it's been between 11 and 12 for the whole trip. And then uh, there is a fair amount of wind, maybe a 10 mile per hour wind, so it's not ideal. But that's the whole reason I do this round trip, because then I'll have tailwinds one direction and headwinds another direction. So by running the trip opposite directions, it gives me the benefit of kind of canceling some of that out. So it's not perfect because it's not 100% efficient in those conversions, but it's, uh, you know, a tailwind one air direction, a headwind the other kind of balances mostly, not completely. So 
with that, we'll start the other direction and see if we do better than 2.2 or worse. So here's my final numbers. I arrived with 58%, 4.6 kilowatt hours of climate control, 31.5 kilowatt hours for moving the vehicle. And over here, 81.9 miles, 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour. The trip time is two hours, 20 minutes, but that had the time after I hit the start button on the fob, which was about 40 minutes before I left. So uh, it evidently starts the trip timer when you remote start the vehicle, not when you put it in gear. So uh, that's the trip information. And now we'll check the tire pressures and they went up not at all because it's cooled out. So they're still 38, 39. So there's that. Now let's find out how it looks in the morning. And it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit when I finished. Okay, I'm back again for my morning test. It is a brisk minus six Fahrenheit out here according to my thermometer. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the vehicle and start it up and go on my drive. So it's just been sitting outside all night. started up when I walked by, so that's a good sign. Note vehicle power reduced due to temperature. You'll see that the temperature is minus five and that the tire pressures dropped to 34 overnight. Uh, that's just cold air. So it's eight, it's four PSI less because the temperature dropped 15 degrees. Um, those will warm up as I drive. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna leave them alone because, uh, you know, it would be more realistic of a cold drive on a cold morning. Cause I'll set, in the winter, I set my tire pressures maybe down to maybe down to 10 Fahrenheit or so. I stopped setting them when it drops below that because it's just not practical. And then when it heats up, I don't want them to get too high. So uh, we'll just go with this. So I'm gonna turn the climate on cause I don't want to freeze to death. And then 72. And I just realized I wasn't on auto last night. So I'm gonna leave it in the same setting. It's still automatic temperature control, I think. And then uh, we'll go with that and drive the same as yesterday. I'm gonna go back over to the screen here and reset my trip, 81.9. And we will go. Now, I expect this to take extra heat because, or extra power because it's having to heat the battery and drive. I'll comment on how bad the power seems to be with the battery this cold. Oh, and I wanted to show the percentage still shows 100%. Okay, fun thing I've already noticed. Do you hear that squeaking? Hopefully that's just suspension and not uh, drive axles. <laughs> when I turn it, squeak, 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 squeak. That's the temperature doing it for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a relatively hard acceleration here. It shows a turtle on the dashboard underneath the gear selector. So, I just want to see how it does. I think it's just struts squeaking. Ah, it's not really limited. It, it still went over 200 kilowatts of acceleration there, power. So, uh, it's not too bad. And, okay, I'll go ahead and put this away and I'll give you an update in probably 20 miles or so to see where I'm at. Okay, here I am 25 minutes in. 
the efficiency or the it's showing 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour my tire pressures are up to nominal they heat up pretty quick when they're that cold and the I'm already at 85% battery and uh, 3 kilowatt hours have come to heat about 10 kilowatt hours to driving so almost 30% to heat right now and uh, when I stopped at my stop sign I was showing about 8 to 10 kilowatt hours or excuse me 8 to 10 kilowatt power draw and uh, that probably means there's a lot of resistance heating going on in the battery the heat pump system in here should only draw a couple kilowatts peak so I expect that was from resistance heating in the pack so it I'm a qu basically a quarter of the way into the test and I'm already down oh now 16% of my battery so I'm already looking to use maybe 60% uh, of the battery or more so I expect it will get better as the pack warms up because it won't need to heat the entire time but we'll give it a go and see what happens here and I am very thankful for the steering wheel heater in here my fingers are pretty frozen even though that it's been running for 25 minutes so the steering wheel heater provides a huge amount of heat and is very nice and same with the heated seats the air temperature in here is pretty cool and I'm kind of disappointed I didn't have it on auto climate last night when I did my other test so in the interest of keeping power usage the same in the same situation I'm not using it now so uh, I don't think it matters much at this temperature like I said that having it set to 72 means it's going to be blowing hot air regardless so uh, I'll give another update here when I get halfway through and we're just now coming over and I wanted to show the solar farm there in the morning here surprisingly a lot of the panels are facing this direction for some reason So I'm halfway through my drive now, just about. I've used 27% of the battery, and I am at 40.9 miles and 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. I'm just here at the roundabout where I turn around. And at this rate, so just to recap numbers from earlier tests, uh, I got, for the whole drive, I used 28% of my battery in nice weather and in cold weather, but with a preheated battery, the test last night, I got, I used 42%. And then in this one, I've already used 27% and I'm halfway done. So I'm expecting to use 54% or so and we'll see where it goes by the time I end the trip and it's going pretty well otherwise just I'll recover the num or recap the numbers there I've used 18.6 kilowatt hours for moving the car and 4.6 kilowatt hours for climate control so 20% is the ratio there right now 20% to climate you notice that's dropped since this morning uh, where it was 30% climate and again I expect that the longer you drive the less it's gonna have to use for climate to condition the battery so but we'll see where we end the day passing by the solar farm again this is the more western portion of it I noticed the solar panels are all pointing east as I would expect this time of day and let's see what they are by the plant they, those are also pointing east and it looks like they've since flipped over from this morning so it must have just been early enough maybe temperature related I'm not sure so 
they're all pointing east now, as I would expect. So I just wrapped up my drive. The final numbers are I ended the battery at 48%, uh, 82.0 miles, 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour, and one hour 43 minutes. You'll notice the balance was 17% climate, 83% powertrain. So 7.3 kilowatt hours went to climate and 35.4 kilowatt hours went to powertrain. Just a quick note as I'm sitting here with the heat pump active, you see it's using about two or three kilowatt hours. That, that also includes whatever systems are in the car besides the heat pump, you know, like lights and things like that, seat heaters. So with that, I'll summarize all three tests at the end, but you can see that I use 10% more in this ultra cold test where I finished at minus three Fahrenheit so it's been between minus three and minus six on this trip so tire pressures ended at nominal 38 psi they heated up to 38 psi pretty quick and then stayed there so with that I'll break and then go I'll charge to 100% and then summarize everything looking at the final results for the 82 mile test in nice weather, 63 degrees, we used about 27.4 kilowatt hours. And once we dropped to 10 degrees, but preconditioned the car from the wall, so that wall energy is not counted, uh, it used 39 kilowatt hours. And then when we cold soaked the car, it used 46.1 kilowatt hours. So this is a pretty huge difference, especially between 63 Fahrenheit and cold soaked. And you'll see the difference in miles per gallon where if we convert the amount of electricity into energy used, uh, this is looks much worse for gasoline cars because they waste a bunch as heat out the exhaust pipe. So that's why most gas cars get like 30, 40 miles per gallon at best because they're blowing heat out the exhaust. And so in that case, we're looking at just over 100 miles per gallon electric with at 63 degrees and then 71 at 10 and 60 at 5 degrees, minus 5 degrees. So even a point to make is that electric get worse relatively versus a gas car in cold weather. As you can see, 60 versus 100. Notice that it's still using less energy than almost any gas car other than a couple super efficient hybrids that are smaller compact cars. So even though electric does relatively worse, it still does much better than gas in cold weather. And also I had no issues starting the car. It just went up and went. It didn't have to crank. It doesn't have like cold oil it needs to deal with. So overall, electric cars still do very good despite the cold weather.